man. Welcome back to the channel, guys. This is a beauty, man. Y'all see this? A hey, guys, this is a actually a O2 model. Wow. Ah, oh, that is a all the model Wrangler. And look at that, guys. A stick equipped with obviously a four wheel drive. Now, JT, stop talking so much. Why is this in? All right. Uh, I'm gonna show you. I can show you better than I can tell you. Da da! Checking your light now because this is an O2 model, guys. I would need a special scan tool, right? This new age scan tool, unable to. This bus network back in O2 was a lot. It was sophisticated at the time, but now it's so obsolete as far as scan tool goes. So my new a the scan tool that I use for the 2022 models. I cannot use on this 2002 models. That's 20 years apart, right? <laughs> no, I cannot use on this car. I don't even know if my new scan tool will even boot up. Point is, I have a scan tool called a DRB3. Yes, and it is the perfect scan tool for these older model Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, the whole nine yard. In fact, that's what the dealer takes use back in the day. You was able to get into just about every module. That is the secret to your scan to success. What module it will allow you to get into. <laughs> because if you can't get into certain modules, what does it matter? The only module a code reader will likely read is uh, like e emissions, P code. The codes that car makers are required to let you know. They can't withhold that information, guys. Uh, in some cases, you know, the industry came down on these car makers. Look, y'all got to make that accessible. P codes are for basically emissions and everybody need to know this information. So stop being stingy with your information. So in fact, the data link connector that you plug your scan to in, the 16 way, it, it became standardized to where it had to be at least six inches somewhere around in this area. It had to be in one central location. Before, GM had their connections in here, Nissan here, Chrysler here. Everybody was all over the place, but yes, over the years, it became standardized that it'd be in this one central area. Now, you new guys may be freaking out. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, guys. I mean, I've been around a minute, and I've seen the industry evolve. I'm going to say it like that. Change, evolve, and move, and move, and move, and here we are today, all right? Yes, that's why I try to keep a fresh brain so I can stay abrupt with all the changes. Yes, I, I got a couple more even decades left of this so you know what i'm saying as long as you can that's a whole nother topic jt but uh guys let me get this in the shop yes it is a stick uh knowing how to drive a stick is etched in my stone once well, etched in my brain once you learn it guys it's hard to lose it so i suggest if you don't know how to drive a stick i'm talking to the young cats now educate yourself because once you get it it's gonna stick with you all right let me get in the shop and figure out what this is stay tuned all right guys here we go uh i got my drb we're about to uh, hopefully try to scan this thing real quick drb stand alone see what kind of codes we come up with oh evap leak y'all see that no crank reference signal and a power steering switch guys three fault codes in this thing okay now we're gonna start with the evap system leak all right y'all know what that means the system has detected that exhaust vapors are escaping this vehicle now what i need to find that out is a smoke machine so y'all hold tight let me go grab the smoke machine i'll be right back who ready guys i'm back let's troubleshoot the evap leak portion okay uh this one is ease of location guys <laughs> This is my vapor canister right here, guys. This is what is used to store those vapors. All right, remember the goal of an EVAP system. You don't want exhaust or fuel vapors escaping into to the atmosphere. So those vapors will be stored in here. And at a predetermined time, the computer will purge those vapors, uh, it's a purge valve, and send them back to the engine to be burnt at a later time at a predetermined time only the computer knows when that time is all right but for now the computer is picking up a leak so what we're going to do we're going to play plus process of elimination guys this is the heart and soul the uh, leak detection pump and the evap so i'm gonna i got my leak detection pump right here i got a hose right here i'm gonna fill the system up with smoke steam and air and monitor right here how my ball react 
All right, so let's do this. Let's pull the main hose off of the vapor canister. Let's put my test hose on here. All right, I have my system plugged up in a vacuum. Oh, I need an air hose right here. Oh, tight. I got battery supply going to the battery. Now let's click on. There we go. So right now it's filling the system up. It is trying to determine if there's any VAP leak. And based on the fact how that ball is bouncing around, there is a leak. Alright, but now, if you want to cut the system in half, guys, like I say, it's a good thing this canister is disaccessible. Notice what I'm doing. I'm going in right here. I'm filling this up. Whatever these two lines going to, it's also being tested for leaks. Alright, so if I had to guess, I would say this big line going to maybe the purge valve. Let's trace it. Yes, it's essentially going to the purge and the other hose is going to the rear. Uh, what's in the rear? The fuel tank, the, the fuel nozzles and the fuel hose and all that stuff. So, let's do Alright, yes, that's definitely a leak. Let's, let's cut this in half, guys. Let's remove verify if i'm leaking in the purge area everything up front let's take this off and cap it off you see where my ball is right let's take this off all right so i got this port blocked off with my finger look at that guys i still have a leak in other words my ball didn't drop which means i either got a leak in the canister itself which i should be able to see right here if that was the case or that bottom hose which is going to the rear my leak is in the rear all right so i have basically cut this in half one or two choices i can go back there and start looking or let me pull let me reverse my hookups right here let me put the purge hose on and remove the rear hose all right let's do that All right, rear hose off. You see my ball way up there. All right, let's cap the rear hose off with my finger. Whoa, did y'all see that? Let me make sure y'all can see both. That ball is... All right, let me take my hand off. See my ball at the top? Now, I want y'all to see both so y'all don't think it's no computer trickery going on here. All right, so I'm going to put my cap, clamp it off. Look at, the, at my finger and the ball. Y'all ready? Here we go. Closing it off. Look at that ball drop. All right, y'all saw that ball drop. Okay, guys. So what that tells me is my leak. It's in the rear. I'm gonna take it off. See the ball go up. Hold it down. See the ball drop. Off, on, off, on. All right. We know where the leak is. So let me let this car in the air, and we gonna track that down, guys. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So now y'all remember up top we was that black holes right there all right that's going to the back so during my process of elimination I found the source of my leak was obviously from the rear so that line coming from the canister goes through this tube metal tubing line it's still rubber right here but eventually right here it would turn into a metal tubing it goes all the way yep, all the way to the tank so you don't see visibly see any smoke through this line in fact i can take the line off right here and clamp it off and my ball should drop okay so the leak is in the tank slash fuel uh, neck area all right so it's still pumped up with smoke so what you do is look around uh-oh i see smoke uh-oh damn it guys This is going to be easier than I thought. I actually thought with this being a Wrangler. Oh my goodness. Alright, let me let this car down and see uh, what that's all about. Let me take a look at that gas cap. As you can see, uh, I'm getting smoke from the gas cap. Hold tight, guys. Alright, I got the Jeep down. Let's take a look at this gas cap. What in the world is... Hey guys, let me try a spare known good gas cap first. Uh, 
there. That's the bulk of my evap leak. But let me find a gas cap. Hold tight. All right, let's do this, guys. I got a van over here. I'm curious if this van has the same. Uh, let's try this. We're just uh, testing. It may work. Now let's go look back at our machine and see if my ball drop signaling that the evap leak is gone. All right, let's turn that back on. There you go, guys. Look at my ball trying to drop. If it dropped to the bottom, guys, that is my source of my leak. Wow. People are still using cheap garbage. I never got this low, so it's likely trying to fill the system up and likely will head to the bottom. Like I told y'all before, man, those aftermarket fuel caps, for some reason, not compatible with, <laughs> I don't know what FCA got going on with they get fuel cap, but they just really, FCA product really wants you to use OEM FCA fuel caps. And guys, it, I, there's a price difference. Okay, the cheapos at AutoZone like seven bucks. OEM, uh, high quality, maybe twenty bucks. Is it worth it? Uh, I'd say so, guys. I mean, you're taking the light on to go off, and plus, you're not contributing to. Look at that. You're not contributing to ruining the ozone by letting exhaust vapors or fuel vapors reach the atmosphere. That's the whole point of the evaporative system in the first place they do not want fuel vapors look at that guys reaching the uh oh my goodness that that's what i need guys that's what will fix the car my ball is already dropped signaling the evap leak is gone all right guys let me go right up an estimate y'all stay tuned man i appreciate y'all watching